Greetings, everyone. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how I plan on building my free doctor ratio. Doctor Disrespectful Ratio is the imaginary character following the path of the hunt. Let's kick things off with his technique, Mold of Idolatry, which creates a dimension and will summon a stone statue of himself to taunt his target. When the enemies in the dimension are attacked to enter battle, there is a chance to reduce the target's speed. With his basic attack, Mind is Might, he delivers a light bash to the melon of a single target in an attempt to teach them two plus two does not equals fish. His skill, intellectual midwifery, will turn your midwife into his wife and deals emotional damage to a single target. His talent, Cogito Ergo Sum, gives him a fixed chance to launch a follow-up attack after his skill is used. This chance will increase with each debuff inflicted on the target. His ultimate, Syllogistic Paradox, which will now and forever be known as L plus Ratio, summons a giant tower to crash any fantasies the enemy had at winning. The enemy hit by Syllogistic Paradox is then inflicted with the debuff, Wise Man's Folly. When a target under the effect of Wise Man's Folly is attacked by a teammate, it will trigger his talent and launch a follow-up attack against that target. Now that you have an idea of what his kit does, the game plan is pretty straightforward. We want to begin his every turn by using his skill, because when his skill is used, we have a chance to trigger that follow-up attack. We want to keep spamming skill until we can trigger his ultimate. Ideally, depending on the situation, you want to target the tankiest enemy on the field with his ultimate. This will place the wise man's folly debuff on them and trigger our follow-up attacks when our teammates deal damage to that enemy. Speaking of teammates, Characters that are good at applying debuffs are going to be extremely useful as teammates. Four-star characters like Hanya and Pila will be very valuable. Hanya will apply a debuff with her skill and generate skill points, enabling the good doctor to always have enough points to cast his skill. And Pila will apply debuffs and lower the enemy's defenses, allowing our follow-up attacks to deal even more damage. Of course, five-star characters like Ruin Mei, Topaz, and Silverwolf will just take him to another level. You can add a locha as sustain for the cherry on top. When it comes to relics, we have a couple options. Our first option is the obvious four-piece Wastelander. This set will grant a 10% increase to our imaginary damage. When he attacks a debuffed enemy, he will gain 10% crit rate, and if the enemy is imprisoned, he would gain an additional 20% crit damage. Apart from the imprisoned, this set's effect should be pretty easy to maintain, making it one of his best sets. Our second set is Ash Blazing Grand Duke, I would not recommend running a full set of Ash. It's gonna be pretty difficult to actually get the full eight stacks of the four piece. So a combination between say two imaginary and two piece Ash is just a better option. Personally, I will be running a two piece imaginary and either two piece musketeer or two piece Ash. That way I won't have to depend too much on my teammates to trigger the sets effect. We can pair that with the planar ornaments, inert salsado or the new firmament of front lines. I'm gonna try to aim for the Salsado because it will synergize pretty well with his ultimate. But if I have good pieces on Firmament, it's a good second option. For our Relic stats, we want a crit body, crit rate specifically if you want to meet the requirements for Salsado. Speed or attack boots, speed specifically if you want to meet the speed requirements for Firmament. A imaginary orb and a attack rope. For substats, go, crit rate, crit damage, attack, and speed. When it comes to light cones, his signature, Baptism of Pure Thought, will without contest be his best option. Since they didn't reveal its stats, I can't really go into any details, but we can assume it's going to be a pretty nice upgrade for him. For a casual play like myself, cruising in the Stellar Sea from the Herta shop will be more than serviceable, granting some much needed crit rate and a 20% attack buff after defeating an enemy. Four-star options like swordplay are fantastic simply because, well, Sushang, what else did you need? But for real, this will be pretty good, especially in single-target boss fights. Only Silence Remains and Subscribe for More are also solid choices. And that will conclude our guide for Star Rail Alhatham. Now get out there and ratio some Genshin players with their crystal chunks and crystal flies and not letting you enter their world to steal their Furina mats freaking nerd.